Well, welcome to Spokane Talks. And I'm going to have a fun time this morning because a friend of mine is here, Scotty. Not the beam me up, Scotty, you know, that you might see from Star Trek or something, but probably just as good. He's decided at a young age to uh, get, get involved in a number of things. He's a musician, has recorded and all of that. And now he's going to jump into politics. We'll talk with this Scotty after this message. Are you looking for something generational, timeless, with historical truth? Then We The People Interactive Calendar is right for you, designed for the generations. With over hundreds of historical dates and funny cartoons, We The People Calendar makes the perfect conversation starter about America's history, what the founders intended, and why it's important today. Our mission is to expand conversations as we all learn together in our pursuit of truths. Let us add to the legacy of our ancestors. To get started, scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen and begin your conversation today. Well, welcome back. Scotty, Scotty Nickel. Yep. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fine, and it's good to see you. You too. It's now you're not very old. No, I'm 29. 20, I was gonna, I was gonna guess 30. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember being that age, Scott. <laughs> uh, all my kids are older than you. Okay. I've almost got grandkids that are as old as wow. you. Wow. Yeah. Well, you didn't have to say that. Wow. <laughs> you know, like you really are old. No. The. Uh, you've been a musician since you've been a little kid, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I can remember at a very young age identifying with music and and singing. And I started playing guitar when I was 12 years old and took piano lessons throughout high school. And uh, I've written songs. I'm a singer-songwriter. Um, I have an album of original music. Um, yeah, love music. I it's it's just part of who I am. I'm always gonna make it. I'm always gonna share it. Yeah, Did, does that come from family or anything, or just your own interest in exploring? Uh, well, I would say that there's a lot of music lovers in my family. Okay. Um, and uh, I I, it's just something that's, um, so intrinsic yeah. to who I am. I mean, it, it's just always been part of me yeah and uh i've always had that desire to express through music and um i absolutely love it so i'm jealous <laughs> okay because i can't hum sing or anything or even whistle but oh, yeah. you can enjoy i can enjoy it. yes <laughs> yes yes i i get very jealous seeing mm -hmm. people with the ability and the and the vocal cords and everything else that go with well it, but... it's so it's so interesting you know, when you share yeah. uh, something that's just part of you and to see people uh, align with it, to see yes. people enjoy it, yes. that's a really special thing. Yeah. It's um, very gratifying. Can you see when you're doing things off in the audience and enough mm -hmm. to get the feedback? Yes. Be, be, yes. Read their faces. Yes, even. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Do they want to sing along sometimes? Sometimes they do. Oh, and I okay. love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Well, okay. So tell me about your history. You're born and raised in this area? I was born and raised in Washington. I was born on the west side, actually, at Fort Lewis. My dad was in the Air Force. Mm, okay. Um, when he, uh, he had retired out of the Air Force, and we moved here when I was two years old, moved oh, okay. to Spokane. So I grew up in Spokane. This is my hometown. Yeah. Um, I think it's such a special place. It's such a beautiful place. And yeah. um, I absolutely love it here. Yeah. Some bad things are happening, though, in our state. And a lot of that is attributed to some of the things going on in Olympia mm -hmm. and some lousy decisions. And I think a lot of it really started a couple of years ago with the Black Lives Matter time period. It wasn't just Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. but this this whole mentality of we owe so much to the criminals and so forth, mm -hmm. and we can't chase them, we can't do this. 
And yet, just this last weekend, uh, on Bloom's Day, an officer was shot, okay, by a repeat, repeat offender uh, with, I don't know, a rap sheet longer than probably your music list, okay? <laughs> and um, and the j judge put him on a million, both, both of them, on a million dollar bond, finally. But you know what? Maybe if one of the times that they were picked up, they stayed in jail or got more help in jail or a controlled situation, mm -hmm. the officer wouldn't have been shot on Sunday. And so yeah. how do we change well, that? Well, first of all, I um, am so thankful that that officer is yeah. alive. Um, you know, I was assistant to the mayor and city administrator for two years. And yes. so during that time, I worked with our police department regularly. I yes. respect our officers yes. so much. I know that our police department does a fantastic job. Yes. They try their very hardest to keep us as safe as possible. Uh, they are engaged with our community. Um, they're very forward thinking. I just have so much good to say about our police department and their professionalism, uh, their commitment to safety in yes. our city. And so, um, so first I just want to say that I'm so grateful that that officer is alive and was released from the hospital. Yes. Um, I, I would say to what I'm, what I'm hearing, uh, because I'm doorbelling a lot last week, I did about 400 houses. Oh, wow. Um, and what I continue to hear yes. is a desire for common sense uh, safety. Yes. So I'll also say that when I was in the mayor's office, um, you know, uh, there was a sweeping, uh, a number of sweeping police reform measures that went into effect. Uh, those were uh, supported and passed by the state legislature. Right. Um, you know, and unfortunately, they are failed policies. And yeah. in fact, they were so failed that they had to go back and undo some of them uh, at the next session. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. But that just goes to show, you know, you wrote bad law when uh, it And it wasn't it that they weren't told it was going to be bad law. That's correct. They yes. were they were warned about the ramifications. And right. and so what I'm what what I want to do in this role is partner with law enforcement. As a state lawmaker, it's so important to have that working relationship. I established that working relationship with our police department yeah. when I was in the mayor's office. I uh, am very familiar with working with law enforcement. I respect them. I want their input. They are the subject matter experts. Right. And so when you're going to enact policy um, that directly affects law enforcement, and the safety of residents in our city and in our state, you need input from law enforcement. Right. I mean, that's just common sense. Ugh. And so um, I will I will be somebody who seeks that out. Uh, and, and we need to have safety in our city and in our state. That is the top priority. Um, that is, we must have that. That's what the residents uh, want. It's what they expect. Yes. And our police department and our law enforcement throughout our state is uh, ready to deliver that uh, safety to us, but they need the tools right. um, that's going to help them and not just help them keep us safe, but help themselves keep uh, the officers safe yes, as well. Yes, 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 yes. Or we won't have any more mm -hmm. officers mm -hmm. because it's a very dangerous profession. Well, that's why yeah, you see yeah. across the nation, yes. uh, police departments are hi hi offering hiring bonuses. Yes. Uh, because it is it is a profession that less and less people are wanting uh, to go into. And, you know, again, I just respect people so much who are willing to go into that line of work. It's such an honorable line of work. And uh, from my experiences and, and speaking with uh, a lot of officers, you know, what they want to do is they want to have a positive impact, just yeah. like what I want to do, and yeah. that's why I'm running for this position. So yeah, we haven't talked about what you're running for. Let's talk about well, that. Well, that's right. So yes. yeah, uh, state representative, third district, which is most of the city of Spokane, um, and uh, I, I I would certainly be honored to to be. Uh, I I'm applying for a job. That's okay. the way okay. I look okay. at it. Yeah. And when I doorbell, Good. you know, it's like a little mini job interview, but. Um, 
the interactions that I'm having with residents are fantastic. I certainly think that um, when you go out, and some people say, oh, do you enjoy, you know, going up to people? I have to say, more people answer the door than you would expect. Really? And there's a lot of chatty folks out there, yeah. which I love because I love having well, we great Well, we spent two years being isolated, too. I think that probably right. helps set it up. But I'm, I'm inspired by people's curiosity yeah. um, about, you know, what I want to do. Uh, what what they think might be helpful in terms of uh, policies um, that should be getting enacted. Um, so obviously safety is number one. Um, and then uh, uh, other things that are, you know, we talk about a lot in, when I'm on the door is, you know, uh, I want to create an environment that makes people's lives easier, however I can do that <clears throat> in this role. And so, you know, it's interesting. We had a $15 billion surplus in our budget. Yes. We don't have a rainy day fund. That money was already spent. Um, and yet, we have two more gas tax increases that are going to be going into effect. From my conversations with people across the city, they don't approve of that. It doesn't make sense to them. It doesn't make sense to me. And um, that's not good customer service. And I will say too, I think that as a state representative, you're in the line of customer service. And yes. so the first thing I would ask, you know, if we had that kind of a surplus is what can we do yeah. to give back to residents? That's, that's what we should be doing. Well, but, it, and, and that should come in the form of some kind of tax relief because, you know, people got their assessments as well. The property taxes yeah. are going up, the gas taxes are going up. And yet, Crime is going up. And so, um, you know, I think we need to take a look at, we need to have somebody in this role who is looking at it through a customer service lens. Yeah. I want to make people safer. I want people to be happy. So I want their life to be as easy and enjoyable as possible. The reason I'm doing this is because I know that as a policymaker in our state, there are ways that you can contribute to that vision. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's uh, let's not forget, too, that mm -hmm. the, the word representative, you're you're there, you're hired by essentially directly by the people that, yes. that vote for you in, in, mm -hmm. in your third mm -hmm. district. OK, mm -hmm. but you're really hired by the state. Right. And and it's got to be more than what you can just accommodate with other legislators over there to get something passed. Mm -hmm. It's got to be effective for those you represent yes and and yes. not special interest groups because there are special interest groups as you know on all sides but we've got to start treating the criminal as a criminal mm -hmm. and yes get them the help mm -hmm. maybe it's not just prison as we've all known it in the past mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there's some directive programs and if they don't settle up and mm -hmm. and and follow through then i'm sorry you're going to be locked up mm -hmm. for a while okay because uh, my daughters, my granddaughters mm -hmm. deserve protection. And that's what I keep okay. hearing yeah. from residents all across our city. Um, certainly, uh, folks want fairness. They want compassion, but right. they expect safe conditions yeah. in our city. And that's something that leaders should do everything in their power to create. Well, it comes down to our justice system, mm -hmm. which means justice for those that are abused mm -hmm. in, in our society by the criminals and, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And it's both sides. Yes, the criminal, let's do what the, we can for him or her and, and so forth, but let's also protect the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And I think we've, got, we've shifted so far to the, what I will call the left, mm -hmm. where we worry about putting people in prison for too long and all of that. And yet I worry about my granddaughters out there, my grandsons out there, and all the people th that we're talking to today. Mm -hmm. um, I remember having a conversation with Jeff Holy, who was a mm -hmm. former police officer mm -hmm. here in town and is now a state senator. And when I first started working with him six years, I think it was ago, or eight now, um, he kept talking about, well, we need safe streets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need safe streets, uh, but we also need safe neighborhoods because that's where the people that will vote for you, Jeff, live in neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. 
the safe streets thing has kind of come back a bit, though, given what's going on in downtown Spokane mm -hmm. and, and so forth. But, but we really want to live where we feel safe, where we don't have to lock the front door all day mm -hmm. when our kids are playing and, and so on. And mm -hmm. that's going to take some work because we've been going the opposite direction. It, it, it is going to take some work. And um, what I know is that I'm not doing this alone. Um, there are a number of folks that are running for... Yes positions like mine across our state. I've had the pleasure of meeting some of them. Uh, I know that they are um, very much in alignment with the belief that we need safety, yeah. uh, tax relief, creating a business-friendly environment throughout our state. That's very important. That goes back to, you know, honestly, good customer service again. Yeah. Um, but so, so I will not be doing it alone. No person can. Um, there will be a group of us, we're going to work as a team, and we're going to bring some common sense back to the state legislature. Okay. That's so important. And we're going to uh, partner and respect our uh, law enforcement. We're going to partner and respect our business leaders and yeah. our community yeah. leaders. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because somebody said to me, oh, you went from music to politics. That's so different. Well, actually... You know, music is about impact, yeah. and politics is about impact. Yes. But also, two fundamentals, uh, communication. Yes. And so, you know, as a musician, I have uh, connected with people from all kinds of beliefs and backgrounds. Sure I'm fascinated yes. by people who have different views than yeah. me. I'm not scared of those views. Uh, so, and, and I think I have a very good attitude in life and uh, it helps me to connect with people it helps me to communicate with people uh, who may not see it like I do but but one thing that can't be denied is what I am hearing over and over again from the folks who are in my district which is most of the city of Spokane yeah and uh, they are aligning with what I have to say which yeah. is that we need common sense safety we need tax relief we need a business friendly environment in our state yeah. And, um, and and this business community has, as you know, in the past stepped up. Yeah. It stepped up for Expo 74 mm -hmm. at the time, the smallest little yeah. city to ever host mm -hmm. an exposition like that. Yeah. Okay. And tax themselves mm -hmm. to do it. Okay. Because they knew that was the best for the mm -hmm. community. They're doing the same thing now with the problems on the streets mm -hmm. and so forth. But you've got a city council and others at the state mm -hmm. le level that you know, that's our business. Well, they're mm -hmm. not doing their business, mm -hmm. you know? And so we, we all need to work together. We need to work together, but uh, I, we need common sense as well. And <laughs> I, I, I simply don't understand folks who are in positions of leadership who wouldn't want to do everything they can to help businesses. Yeah. But I'll say too, the businesses in our state have been through hell Yes. Uh, through COVID and all the lockdowns um that were so unfair so unnecessary i want to be very clear that i uh do not support those lockdowns yeah. i never did um what the damage that that did is um we haven't even seen the full effects of it no. probably and that includes on our schools but there were states that didn't go that route and they were you know accused of all kinds of things, but yeah, the sky yeah. never fell. So, um, you know, this didn't need to happen. And so I can't go back and change that. But what I can do, hopefully, and, and I plan to do it, is be a part of the healing process yeah. for our businesses. Yeah. And so we have a great future ahead. I think Spokane can be a model city in America. I truly believe that. And I think that, you know, our state has so much potential. We certainly have some enhancements to make, um, wh whether it's safety, whether it's tax relief, whether it's, um, you know, doing what we can to enact policies that help businesses. Uh, I believe that we can accomplish those things and we're going to have a great future. Spokane just got some new energy the last month and a half. Mm -hmm. Bloomsday, mm -hmm. Lilac Parade back. Mm -hmm. Three-on-three -three basketball, the world's largest mm -hmm. hoop fest this mm -hmm. last weekend. Yes. I'm hearing some positive things. It's, well, it is you know, so... 
Yes. It is so and nice. And sunshine, too. Yes, yeah. but you know what? It is so nice to see people happy. Yes. That's yes. what I love, you know, to yeah. go out. And I walked through Hoop Fest on Sunday, and so many happy people, yeah. so many people enjoying Smiles their lives. Again. And that's, that's, you know, whatever I can do in yeah. this role to facilitate that kind of an environment, that kind of a lifestyle in our city, yeah. and really in cities all across our state. I, I want to be a part of that, and um, it would be an honor. So Yeah. Well, you know I support you. Thank you. You're, you're going to be one of our best uh, representatives Thank for this so area. Thank you so much. Uh, you'll bring some new life and energy to it. Um, I, I expect to see you singing uh, on our Capitol steps <laughs> you know, and all that. Uh, you know, because you often work in the small mm -hmm. venues around town, mm -hmm. of the effect when you were talking about the effect mm -hmm. on small business and so forth. I experienced it when we were out talking to business folks in our, we, we did a campaign called We're Open, to, to, even if mm -hmm. it meant coming by and picking up mm -hmm. something and so mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, there was not a business man or woman owner that didn't have wet eyes, tears in their eyes when they mm -hmm. said how it was affecting their employees mm -hmm. for not being able to work and all of that. The, and often I heard, Kent, I had have such great employees, and look what it's doing to them. Their family. I know when their spouse's birthdays are. I know the names of their children and all of that. And, then, and it didn't need to happen. No, it and didn't. And we have it, examples of states that didn't yeah. go that route. They it, let people uh, keep it, their freedoms. Exactly. And uh, it didn't need to happen. It's been proven. It's been shown. Everybody knows yeah. it now. And... Uh, that's a shame, but we also need people who are um, in positions of leadership who are going to be willing to be voices, yes. uh, strong voices, and uh, I would never support such a thing. So yeah, Good. Scotty Nickel, congratulations on Thank stepping you. up. Thank That's you. It's a real responsibility as you're finding yes. out. Uh, I know you're enjoying doing the door knocking, the yeah. doorbelling, and so yeah. forth because you get to meet people and, exactly. and, and pick up some good ideas mm -hmm. and really hear what the problems are because you can get other politicians talking about what the problems mm -hmm. are and it's their agenda and so forth. But, right. But now you hear what you want to represent, right. which are the people out there. That's right. Yeah. Good luck to you. Okay. Thank you so much. You'll come back again? Absolutely. All right. Scotty Nickel, third legislative district. He'll be on the ballot. August 2nd. August 2nd coming up. My mm -hmm. gosh, that's just around the corner, isn't that it? That is. Yeah. Thanks, Scotty. Thank you. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.